What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Eaching Oracle the Cosmic Way. And here we are with hexagram 25, Innocence, which the I Ching defines as not ex an attitude of not expecting and not projecting. And this is heaven over thunder. Judgment. Innocence has supreme success to be firmly correct furthers. If someone is not in accord with his true nature, he has misfortune, and it does not further him to undertake anything. Not expecting, not projecting, the sage informs us, is a person's natural state of mind. It means residing in one's center, where discernment springs spontaneously from the feeling of what is harmonious and what is discordant. Such a state is in harmony with the cosmos and draws its help in all situations. Not expecting means approaching something, such as the sage, another person, a situation, free of prejudice, preconceived images, fixed beliefs, inner demands, fears, or doubts, it is to suspend judgment until one is led by one's feelings to a correct discernment, which, is, which expresses itself in an inner yes or no. No logical justification is needed beyond this feeling. Receiving this hexagram counsels the person to reflect on whether he is expecting or projecting in the way indicated above. For doing so would create, create the conditions expected and therefore also create a faith. In its cosmic meaning, the word innocence describes human nature in its original condition before it has been colonized by the collective ego as in perfect harmony with the cosmos and completely adequate in all respects to enable a person to live his life happily. Innocence also implies that a person's inner program as designed by the cosmic consciousness is free of all intention, contrivance, and falseness. It is a feeling program that knows through the feelings the appropriate responses to all things. This feeling program is quick, quickly derided by the collective ego as worthless in the sense of being ignorant, naive, and foolish. On these grounds, the collective ego overwrites this original program with a purely mental program it has devised. The definition of innocence by the collective ego thus shifts the faculty of discernment from feeling to thinking. This shift is accompanied by ceasing to speak in terms of what feels harmonious or discordant to mental terms that define what is good or evil. By this simple stroke, the ability of discernment is taken away from the individual and its source and its inner truth and given over to the collective ego as the authorizing institution for all judgment about the nature of things. The person receives this hex hexagram to make him aware that his cosmic task is in fact to return to his original innocence by ridding himself of the collective ego's mental program with all its mistaken ideas and beliefs that have put spells and poison arrows on his true nature. In fulfilling this task, he harmonizes with the greater plan that is at work in his life to manifest the uniqueness of his true self. Think about that. Think about that. The greater plan that is at work in your life is quite literally to manifest your uniqueness. Not projecting everything that happens in your life. Everything that happens in, is, in your life is for the purpose of manifesting the uniqueness of your true self. Not projecting warns, warns a person of a false attitude he has that is projecting negative effects upon a situation. You may, for example, be looking at someone with pity. In doing so, he is actually projecting a spell upon the other that, that he is helpless, which brings him even more harm. His projecting pity diverts him from saying the inner no to the other's display of helplessness, which display comes from the ego. The inner no would strengthen that person's true self, giving him the message that he can ask the cosmos for help. Line one, innocence brings good fortune. Receiving this line tells a person that he is in harmony with the cosmos, therefore he receives its help and the gifts he needs. The line states that our original nature and its two centers of consciousness, consciousness, thinking and feeling, is innocent at birth. The thinking center is the large brain. The feeling center is the heart. When we are centered within ourselves, both are neutral and ready to receive in a balanced way. A person who is centered responds spontaneously in harmony with his inner truth and thus attracts the help he needs from the cosmos. This is the good fortune referred to. This contrasts with a person who has allowed his thinking center to be taken over by the ego, 
This results in the ego seizing some of its true feelings and putting them into the service of its values. This happens, for example, when the ego seizes feelings of love and uses them as an instrument of power. Another consequence is that ego emotions such as pity, hatred, envy, jealousy, and the like are created by the mistaken beliefs, diverting the person from his true and natural responses to situations and thus creating a fate for him. Line two, if one does not count on the harvest while plowing, plowing, <laughs> plowing, nor on the use of the ground while clearing it, it furthers one to undertake something. Not counting on the harvest while plowing refers to relating to events in such a way that our gifts and unique talents can express themselves. This occurs when a person has a feeling relationship with what he does. A feeling relationship means that he says the inner no when it is appropriate, consistently withdraws from ego behavior, and keeps himself aware to go with what feels harmonious and to retreat from what feels discordant. This is in contrast to an ego attitude in which a person inwardly expects and demands that the harvest, the outcome, be what he believes it should be. Plowing and clearing the ground refers to the inner undertakings that return a person to his original nature, allowing it more and more to express itself in its uniqueness. These undertakings consist in identifying and deprogramming prejudices, pre-structured views, and mistaken beliefs. The ground is not to be prepared for the planting of good seeds, good seeds as is done in positive thinking or imaging, or by introducing another belief system. Preparing the ground for peace, for example, does not mean praying for peace, as this would bypass seeking out and deprogramming the mistaken beliefs that form it and perpetuate, foment and perpetuate war. Receiving this line counsels a person to examine his attitude towards his goal, the harvest, and to free it from any projection or spell put upon it by his egotistical demands. Line three, undeserved misfortune. The cow that was tethered by someone is the wanderer's gain, the citizen's loss. This line can refer to a person who has innocently been drawn into another person's fate in order to gain something from it. The gain can be a material possession that fate has taken away from the other due to his having attached himself to the possession. The line can also be received by someone who believes that because he has behaved well and done good deeds, he deserves the praise, gifts, and help of the cosmos. His expectations and belief that he is deserving have tied inner strings of attachment to the expected gifts. This is the meaning of the tethered cow. Since the cosmos withdraws from a person who has such expectations and attachments, the gifts do not come. As a result, the person thinks that his misfortune is undeserved and that he has been treated unfairly by the cosmos. He is counseled by this line to rid himself of the self-image of the good person. He also needs to free himself from all ideas that have to do with expectation and deserving. The wanderer refers to the person who is following the path of his inner truth and therefore is in harmony with the cosmos. He walks through life without attachment. Because he is aware of the source of his gifts, protection, and help, all that he needs continues to flow freely to him from the cosmos. Line four, he who is firmly correct remains without blame. Here, to be firmly correct means saying the inner no to the collective ego's contention that following one fe one's feelings is stupid and that the feelings are only subjective and cannot be trusted. The inner no likewise must be said to the collective ego's putting so-called objective thinking up on a pedestal. Thinking takes its correct place and is without blame only when it follows the feelings. It creates blame when it harnesses the feelings and turns them into ego emotions. The cosmic consciousness is a feeling consciousness that can also think, but it is through our feelings that we connect with it. To be firmly correct can also be counsel for a person not to be drawn from his inner center and his sense of what is correct by the fear-inspiring things that others say. He needs instead to say the inner no to the ideas behind those fears, which, if not corrected, will project what is feared into reality. This can also be counsel against listening to thoughts or ideas that would tempt him to blame the sage, fate, or other people for what is happening, either to him or to the group with which he identifies. He needs to withdraw from such blaming and also to withdraw from seeing himself as part of a group we, such as a family, race, culture, or economic system. Every person has his own relationship with the cosmos, which determines everything that happens to him individually. 
Line five, use no medicine in an illness incurred through no fault of your own. Once you ask for help, it will pass of itself. This line is saying that the illness a person is suffering has been caused by a poison arrow coming from someone else, either in the past or in the present, in the form of one or more negative thoughts. When he receives this line, he does not need to identify the thoughts, but only find out who put the poison arrow on him, say the inner no to that person, and then ask the sage and the helpers in the invisible role to eliminate it. The inner no needs to be repeated daily until he has been told by the sage through the RTCM that he can cease in his efforts. Then the illness will pass of itself because the cause has been removed. That, that, that's the thing, guys. The causes of illness are primarily in these poison arrows and spells and projections, either of your own making or from others. You know, illnesses are not caused by physical reasons. They manifest physically, but it's caused by consciousness. It's caused by our thoughts. <clears throat> However, when the condition has become chronic through additional spells being added, after the illness is manifested, these other spells need to be identified and deprogrammed before the healing can be complete. These other spells can originate in the diagnosis or prognosis or in false conclusions drawn about the condition and its causes or about one's nature, i.e. believing you're not who you really are, living in the ego. Line six, innocent action brings misfortune nothing furthers. The seeming contradiction in this line reveals that a person has acted from a delusion. He believes he has behaved innocently because he has done all the correct things as defined by the collective ego. However, such, because such behavior is against his true nature, he has only suffered setbacks and misfortune. This line can also describe a person who thinks that by following the wisdom of the ancients, he is acting in harmony with the cosmos. He is not listening to his inner feelings and inner truth, but is following pre-structured beliefs that trap him in fixed responses. Since, since fixed responses cannot relate to the uniqueness of the moment, they exclude the helpers, which are the ancient beliefs do, and create disharmony. In both cases, a person can return to harmony by ridding himself of the self-image of the innocent person. A person who follows his true nature only responds to what comes from his common sense. This keeps him in harmony with the cosmic whole and thus does not create a fate. Remember, the common sense is the aggregate of all your senses, inner and outer. This line also counsels a person not to blame himself when he has made a mistake. Making mistakes is part of the cosmic way of learning. After recognizing that he has made a mistake, all he needs to do is rid himself of a mistaken idea or belief let go of the matter and go on. Only the ego attaches itself to the mistake and indulges in blaming the person. The ego does this to make him be afraid of learning. Wow, wow. <clears throat> Accepting the ego's blame puts a poison arrow on him and also opens the door to more blame being heaped on him by the egos and others. All these consequences of accepting, accepting self-blame comprise the misfortune mentioned. He can end his misfortune by freeing himself from the poison arrow of self-blame. This line can also refer to a person who, in doing the right things, expects the praise and approval of the sage to be reflected in some sort of success. Any form of expectation comes from the human-centered view of the universe and soils his innocence. Related ideas are those of having rights over others or over nature. Such ideas violate the cosmic principle of modesty. An attitude of modesty is a result of recognizing one's true place in the cosmos as equal to all other things. Without modesty, nothing furthers. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe right there, and I'll see you again in the next one.